So we're going to get started here in a minute, but um, I'm going to give a second for Facebook to go tell everybody that we're doing Whip It Up Wednesday. And I've got to find my phone, because I just had it in my hand, um, but I don't know where it went, so give me one second. my phone and then it does all that. So we're going to get here started here. Um, as soon as I figure out how to share this video, so some folks from the Facebook group can join in. Hey Melanie, how you doing girl? Are you enjoying Wyoming? I hope you are. Um... I'm so sorry guys. Alright, let's see. Alrighty. So we are going to go ahead and get started here. I've got the uh, phone ready to go. So I can see your comments here. And if I remember to look over here, I'll see your comments here. Today, we are making tacos. So it is Taco Wednesday, not quite the right alliteration. It's Taco Tuesday, but we're gonna be making tacos today. Um, today, a couple of our tools that we're, I'm, I kind of went with the simple tools that really every kitchen needs. Instead of, you know, we had the multi-blade um, slicer, we have the crock pot, or the rock crocks, and those are kind of our pricier items. Um, but today I wanted to kind of showcase some of our really good, really easy tools that just make making cooking just quick and easy and fast. Um, so we're going to be using our mix and chop today. Um, let's see, there you go. You can kind of see the blades are uh, like a star shape, um, kind of a curvy star. So I call it the dancing star because he's just dancing there. Um, but this helps with ground meats. So if you guys like to make chilies or taco, um, what you do is you brown the meat and then as you're browning it, um, you kind of press and turn and it just makes it nice and fine so you don't have that those big chunks of meat. If you want the big chunks of meat, you can easily get those um, by doing it a little bit differently. So we're going to be using that. We're going to be using our coarse grater. Um, this is real easy. We'll use this for cheese. And then our simple slicer and our garlic slicer um, to dice up the onions. So hey Mary Catherine, how you doing girl? Um, and then we just have a normal pan. I have a cheap pan. Um, that's my next thing that I'm saving up for. So for those of you that have been tuning in to Whip It Up Wednesday, one thing that I'm super excited about is um, through my commission, I was able to afford our five-inch Sinatoku knife, uh, for forged cutlery. So for those of you that listened a couple weeks ago, one of my main uh, whys to becoming a consultant is I want to get my friends and family um, some stuff for pretty good prices. Um, <laughs> Steve, I will get you last week's delivery sometime in the next couple months. <laughs> Um, but I finally did with uh, my commission from one of my last parties, I was able to get the 5 inch. So right now I have the 5 inch Santoku, I have the 7 inch Santoku, I have the 5 inch chef's knife, and I have the 3 inch utility. So I'm almost there, I almost have the whole set, um, and I'm piecing them together. So today we're going to be using the 5 inch, my brand new knife, the 5 inch Santoku Forest Cutlery. Um, and I'm super excited about it. And then I have my own homemade taco seasoning. So I'm pretty stoked about my uh, taco seasoning and I'll be using our stacked measuring spoon set um, to kind of dish that out into the thing. And then the last piece is our measure all. Um, this is the smaller one. So last week we used, I think we used the um, two cup version and this week we're gonna be using the one cup version. There's also a petite, which is tablespoons. Um, and it's a quarter cup or tablespoon um, by the tablespoon. And then we have our simple slicer. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in. The way that I make my taco or my taco meat is I like to brown a little bit of um, garlic. And um, I'm using shallots today because I didn't have onions. I love shallots. Uh, I'm not sure really what the difference between a shallot and an onion is taste-wise. Uh, but I like both of them. So, oh, one thing I forgot to dive into. 
I am going to start doing a raffle for anyone who tunes in live to the um, Whip It Up Wednesday. If you share the video, you get two tickets. And if you purchase something from um, the link that I'm going to post at the end of the video, then you get five tickets. So one ticket for viewing it live, two tickets for sharing it, and five tickets for purchasing something through um, the link that I'm going to share. And just for those of you that haven't tuned in before, um, I am saving up and fundraising for a organization that is near and dear to my heart. It's called Team Red, White, and Blue. And they bestowed an honor upon me to run the New York City Marathon, which is one of my biggest dreams. Um, so I get to run the marathon for Team Red, White, and Blue um, in November. So the show link that I'm going to be posting at the end of all of my Whip It Up Wednesdays is a fundraising link. Um, all of my commission and all and um, yeah, all of my commission will be donated to um, my race and everything like that. So I have a running list of those of you that are tuning in live. At the end of the show, I want you guys to comment on your favorite thing so I know that you stay tuned. Um, and that's when I will write your name down for the raffle. So again, one ticket for tuning in live, two tickets for sharing the video and getting other people to tune in while it's live, and five tickets if you purchase something through the fundraising link that I'm going to be um, posting. So we'll just dive right in. I'm going to use the simple slicer. Um, it's exactly that. It's simple and it slices. It actually comes with a finger guard, so you can put the food. Sorry, you can put the food into the finger guard so you don't slice your fingers off. Um, I'm not going to be using the whole shelf today, so I'm not going to use that and watch me end up cursing because I sliced my finger off. Um, but for the simple slicer, it comes in three different ways. So this is the lock. Uh, if you notice, there's no lift there, so I can store this in the lock position. In the one, um, you can barely tell, but it's just it's a, a shave, basically. So I actually cut one of these in a one. Let's see if you can see see how thin that is. So that's on the one setting. And then the two setting, which is what we're going to use today, so I'll show you more of those. And then there's a three, and these are shallot, so they're kind of hard. So the three setting, you can see the thickness there. So again, I'm going to use the two. Um, I'm going to um, slice these, and then I'm going to use my Santoku, once I'm done slicing, to dice it up and throw it in the pan. So that easy. Just slides it and it cuts real nice and simple. And then we're going to use the um, garlic slicer to slice up the garlic. And a little trick for those of you that don't watch the 5,000 different cooking shows, um, take the back of a flat knife and you're going to just take the garlic, punch it real quick, and that makes it super easy to peel. Um, and then I always have a trash bowl off to the side. So I'm going to throw that in the garlic slicer and then I'm just going to Slice off the garlic. For those of you that haven't seen me use this garlic slicer before, um, if there is one product that I keep in my fridge at all times with garlic in it or with anything in it, it's my garlic slicer. So um, I am obsessed with garlic and what it does is it shaves it to kind of that nice thin um, level. So one of the things that I read recently about garlic is if you don't like a really heavy garlic taste, then actually slicing it is better than crushed garlic. Crushed garlic has all of the garlic oils and everything like that. Um, I personally like garlic chips. That's one of my favorite things um, to munch on. Yes, I'm a little weird and it's really not a good date night snack. <laughs> um, so now all I'm doing is I'm just gonna rough chop these because again, they were all already sliced. So you don't have to worry about getting it super fine or super diced, um, but I'm at least gonna get it started. And hi to everybody who's tuning in. I've got, it uh, looks like Frank and Jason, Anna, uh, Kayla, and Arthur. So, hey guys. Um, for those of you that didn't pay attention before, we do have a raffle going on today. And uh, one of the things that I did forget to mention, I will draw from that raffle at the end of the month and send you something. So I'll contact you, ask for a mailing address, and I'll send you a prize in the mail. So you don't even have to order from this raffle, which is kind of cool. All right. Um... For those of you that have watched my videos before, another very easy way to do this is using our uh, manual food processor, because you just dump everything in there, you pump the handle a couple times, and you're done. And if anyone is actually close by, you can see that I tear up from onions very easily, even shallots. Um, so I'm actually tearing up from this a little bit, but it's not too big of an issue um, when it's a small amount. Um, but it's nice when you have a manual food processor. It's an enclosed um, system. So you end up not actually um, tearing up from it. 
So I'm going to heat some olive oil real quick, um, and then we're going to dump the garlic and onion into the olive oil so it can brown up a little bit. Then we'll throw the turkey meat in there, uh, let that cook off, and um, yeah, we'll, and then we'll add some seasoning and we'll be, we'll be done with the turkey meat. So, while I'm waiting for this olive oil to heat, what is your favorite way to eat tacos? What's your favorite meat in your tacos? Do you like fish tacos, turkey tacos? Because today we're going to be making turkey, so I'm trying to get this a little bit leaner for the race. Uh, do you like beef tacos, pork? What's your favorite item to put into the tacos? Let's see. Alright, so like I said before, um, we are going to brown these, and one of the things I forgot to mention is we have our flexible um, cutting mats, so last, uh, or this most recent catalog, we actually um, re-colored the mats, so they're nice vibrant colors, so if you like nice vibrant colors, take a look at that. Um, using our mix and chop, again it's mix and chop, so I'm just going to mix in these onions and garlic to get them started. Um, the other thing that I am absolutely obsessed with is flavored olive oil. I'm not sure if you guys like flavored olive oil or not. Hey Tara! Um, but this one is, see if you can read it, uh, roasted chili and garlic. So it adds a little bit more heat to um, the whole dish. And then the one that I love cooking with, I actually got it at um, La Encantada for those of you that are in Tucson. There's the uh, Queen, Creek, Queen Creek Olive Mill. Uh, it's right next to the Lush and the Apple Store. Um, but they have a roasted garlic olive oil that's absolutely amazing. So if I'm cooking with anything, I'm cooking with that. All right, so today's going to be a little bit... I don't really have too much more to say. Um, so I just want to hear from you guys. What is your favorite product that you have seen? And... If you own something, please tell us all about what you have um, and what you love about it. While you guys do that and comment and chat, I am going to open up this turkey meat. We'll just do this one today. For those of you that don't have kitchen shears at home, um, highly recommend because I use my kitchen shears for pretty much everything. Opening up packages, but more importantly, I love to use them for like if you want to dice up chicken, um, I have the, we used it last time, the um, salad choppers, but if you're just taking like one piece and you want to cut it just two or three times, just take a set of kitchen shears and there you go. Um, another good use of them is green onions, so take the, the whole stock of green onions and just cut, um, use scissors and cut it up, makes it real easy. So we're just going to stir up these onions and garlic for a minute. Um, let it brown. You want to wait until it gets to a fra fa fragrant. Yeah, I can't talk. Um, so it's nice and fragrant. You don't want to burn it though because you're going to be adding the meat in there and if you cook it for too long, then you could potentially burn it. So, while I wait, I'm going to write down everyone's name. So go ahead and comment so I know you're still here and we're going to add your name. So I have Tara and Steve that have already commented. And make sure you tell me what your favorite um, way to make tacos is. Because I would love some more recipes. Because this is kind of, this is my go-to. For those of you that are on my other um, Facebook page, you know I was asking about what the recipe is. People were like, fish tacos! And, and something else, and I was like, eh, I don't have fish at home, so we're going to go with ground turkey, and we're going to make turkey tacos. Alright, so we've got the onions and the garlic nice and browned in here. And I'm just going to add the ground turkey in there. Wash my hands real quick. And now you guys get to see the mix and chop go to work. So real easy, you're just going to press down. It's, it's got a weighted handle so you don't have to use a lot of muscle. And you're just going to spread that around. So as you can see, it's kind of nice and spread out. Um, you can start seeing the start form in there. And I'll bring this up to the screen in just a second. Oh, 
going to make a noise. All right, so we're going to turn the heat up a little bit. And basically, we just want to brown this meat off. So um, I'm going to let that sit for a second and brown. And while I do that, we'll go ahead and shred up some, some cheese. So today I'm using a uh, Colby Pepper Jack cheese and our coarse grater. So um, last week I showed you that we've got the multi-blade grater slicer. But sometimes you don't want to take that big honking thing out. You just need to grate a little bit of cheese. Um, little known fact, the FDA actually approves a small level of sawdust to be added to um, the cheese, like the bagged cheese. So I personally am not a big fan of sawdust in my cheese. So just getting a nice block of cheese um, using our coarse grater. For those of you that have this and don't know how to use it, it's going to come folded like this. And what you want to do is, if you're right-handed, you want to just stick your thumb there and you're going to push a little bit. So, I don't know if you can tell. You can hear that. So you want to pull the handle kind of towards you and then you're going to release. And that's how you get it. You can get it flat or you can get it angled. So today we're going to use an angled. If you're left-handed, all you want to do is you want to use your index finger to do that. So it doesn't take a lot of strength. It just is a matter of um, making sure that you know that's how you do it. If you try to rip it open, you're going to break it and then I'm going to have to replace it for you. All right. So again, I just have it on that angle and I'm just going to sit here on top and great cheese. It's really not that entertaining to great cheese. Um, and this is actually really soft because it's been sitting on the counter for about five minutes. Um, and I had to run to the grocery store because I forgot cheese. So it's been out for a little bit. But again, it just handles really well. It's got nice sharp teeth. Uh, so it cuts right through that soft cheese really easily. And I don't need a lot of it. So, so we've got the Colby Jack shredded up. And then we're going to go check on our turkey. And again, we're just grating this. Now, if you have or a beef um, type of taco, then you want to make sure that you drain off the fat um, from it. Turkey doesn't have a lot of fat in it, so I actually don't drain any of it. I get to the point that it's almost browned, and then, because I don't like rubbery meat, um, so right now, let's see if you can see that picture very well. So right now you've got a little bit of pink in there, um, but it's predominantly browned up, cooked a little bit. Um, so we're going to cook it just a little bit longer, and then we're going to add the sauce in there and just let it kind of seep in the, I'm sorry, not the sauce, the seasoning, and we're just going to let it seep in the seasoning. So um, one of the good things about the mix and chop is it actually comes with, I probably should have done this before, but the blade is tapered. Uh, it's not a blade, sorry. The I'm calling each of these things a blade. So it's tapered. So it, it actually comes to a point um, right at the tip. So it actually cuts through um, the meat pretty well and chops it up, which is why it's called the mix and chop. Uh, but the other good use of it is when you have uh, frozen meat. So for those of you that like to throw your ground chicken or ground beef or uh, ground turkey into the freezer when you get home, so you can just pull it out and, and throw it in the pan like I do. Uh, it just makes it really easy to cut through. So you can either throw it in the microwave and defrost it a little bit, but then this kind of chops right through it so it breaks it down much easier. Alright, so with my taco seasoning, my homemade taco seasoning, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of that to the dish. And all you got to do is kind of sprinkle it all over and then the mix and chop is going to do its job of mixing it in. So along with that, depending on how much fluid or liquid is uh, remaining, so if you're bringing something from frozen, there's probably going to be a good amount of liquid still in there. Um, I'm just going to add in, I like to do chicken stock. You don't have to do chicken stock. You can easily just do water, but I like to do chicken stock because it just adds a little bit more flavor into it. And then I'm just, now I'm going to use the mix and chop as a mixing tool. So... Um, Earlier in this video, I was talking about how this pan is not a Pampered Chef pan. And one of the easiest ways to tell that it's not a Pampered Chef pan is how warped it is. So I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but it's super angled right now. Um, so I promise you my, my stove top is actually flat. Um, but this is a very warped uh, pan. So the 
quality of the Pampered Chef um, cookware actually prevents it from warping, which I think is really good. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to just put a top on that thing and turn it down to low. We're going to let that cook for about 15 minutes or so, really get the flavor into that turkey. Um, and that's my taco. So it's real easy, then you just assemble, you put it in tortillas, or uh, I'm a big fan of butter lettuce for those of you that saw uh, my, my Thai chicken wraps last week. I'm a big fan of butter lettuce, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. Um, and then top it with a little bit of cheese, a little bit of salsa. If you want to make your own homemade fresh salsa, you can use the manual food processor. Throw a couple tomatoes in there, throw some peppers in there, a little bit of cilantro, uh, some lime, and some onion, and just um, make Manuel dance, and he delivers salsa af afterwards. So, if you have any questions for me on any of these products, let me know. And make sure you comment below um, what your favorite thing that you saw today, so I can put your name down for the drawing. Also, um, because a lot of folks watched and I'm not seeing too many comments, I'm going to open it up and if you share this video and any of your friends comment, um, just make sure that they comment that you were the one that shared the video with them and you will get, a, uh, you will get two tickets and they will get a ticket for watching. So. Come on back next Wednesday. We're going to do Whip It Up Wednesday, and next Wednesday is going to be People's Choice. So I'm going to be putting it out there, asking what you guys want me to cook. Um, I will have a decision by Monday, so I can make sure that I go and buy everything and make sure I have all the right stuff to cook it. Um, but I'll put a couple options out, of, out there, and you guys can vote on it. So thanks again for coming to Whip It Up Wednesday and helping support me follow my dream of running the New York City Marathon while supporting Team Red, White, and Blue. If you don't know anything about Team Red, White, and Blue, go look them up. They're an amazing organization, teamrwb.org. See you guys later. Take care.